Hi, in this month's tips and tricks, we're going to download multiple tiles of LiDAR data from the Service New Brunswick uh, website, and we're going to build a large grid surface using Civil 3D. So first, we need to acquire the data by going to the uh, Service New Brunswick website and downloading the LAZ files. So if I've already went ahead a time and, uh, and, and acquired the data. If you remember my last month's uh, tips and tricks, I showed you how to download the little application LAS zip. So I'm going to use that to extract the LAZ files. All right, so I'm going to add the data here. I'm going to add all four tiles at the same time. As uh, we've showed you last week uh, or last month, uh, we're going to filter the data to only export the uh, number two classification, which is the ground uh, data. This time, as a twist, I'm going to export the data at, out as an ASCII text file, and we're only going to keep the XYZ. All right, so we'll hit decompress and start. Now that all the div, all of the data has been uh, unzipped, uh, you'll notice that we have now four uh, text files or a text file for each uh, LAZ file. And, and what those are, they're just um, files containing uh, X, Y, Z. Uh, they're, they're space delimited. And uh, we, we notice that the uh, easting it comes first, northing, and then the elevation. Of each one. All right, so let's uh, head over to Civil 3D and uh, we're going to uh, build a grid surface from that. All right, in Civil 3D, I'm going to first head over to change my workspace. We're going to use some of the uh, GIS uh, Map 3D tools to, to, to help us out today. So let's flip over to the planning and analysis workspace and under the create ribbon uh, you'll find the command create from points or, or generate a 3d surface uh, from points so I'm gonna add my four text files perfect you can look at the little preview just to make sure we have the right uh, format or so the correct format here. We have ENZ, uh, which is correct, and then you can sort of confirm with the um, preview. Next, you want to make sure that you assign the proper coordinate system uh, for the surface. So I'll we'll search here for CSRS, and then New Brunswick comes first. So we'll select that. Next, I'm going to set the output location for my new uh, surface. You'll notice here it's going to create a grid uh, geotiff surface. So I'm going to give it a name here that we can recognize later. And we're going to save that as a tiff. And that's it. We'll click OK and let it run. Now that my uh, surface has been uh, built, one thing you'll notice if, if I go back to my Windows Explorer, you'll notice that in the background, uh, all the points were added to a, uh, a TIFF file, a TIFF surface file. Uh, and then that TIFF was uh, automatically attached, uh, as you can see, to my drawing. So at this point, the TIFF uh, a TIFF file, if you're not familiar with uh, with that, it's a grid surface. It's a grid type surface, and uh, it's commonly used to represent a, a large uh, area, a large surface model. Um, you can push that GeoTIFF to, to any uh, sort of GIS mapping system. You can also uh, hand that out over to um, to designers using Civil 3D. So using the native Civil 3D uh, command, you can uh, build a surface from, from a, a TIFF file. Um, so all right, so let's, let's have a little bit more fun with this surface. Um, since we're inside the planning and analysis 
workspace, if I head over to the analyze, um, there's a few things we can have fun with. Number one, uh, the surface hill shade uh, will control sort of the shadows. If you if you'll notice the um, where you get some some elevated areas, we can sort of make out a little shadow. So in other words, you can sort of change like the position of the sun and uh, just sort of get a different uh, uh, shadow effects and try to generate uh, some somewhat of a contrast there. Um, so that's pretty fun. Another uh, fun tool here uh, is this little style editor. So using that we can create a color theme map. And uh, in Map 3D or in Civil 3D there's a bunch of presetted um, color palettes you can use like this one, the USGS National Map Palette. I'll just use that one. And uh, as you can see, it creates a pretty cool exhibit. Another thing that people are often uh, or often are looking for at this point are contours. So just a quick way to generate uh, a contour layer um, that that you can push over to, um, you know, to a mapping system or to uh, to show up on on some documentation. If I head over to the View Ribbon tab and uh, open up my Map Task pane, um, you'll see here that, that I have this grid surface listed. Uh, now if you select that uh, and right click on that surface, uh, there's a command there called Create Contour Layer. And uh, we can give, give this a quick name here, I'll just leave it as, as is. I'll set my interval to every one and a major contour every five. Uh, we'll use polylines as the object type. And I'm just going to save that in my folder. So what, what's happening here is uh, it's going to create or it's going to export those contours as a uh, an Autodesk uh, spatial data file or an SDF file, which is almost the equivalent of um, or similar to a shape file that you'll find in the SESRI uh, world. So I'll save that up and uh, you can even toggle the uh, labels here if you want. Click OK. Look at that. So we get those, those nice contours. It's automatically generated in a matter of a, a few seconds. All right, let's push this a little further and let's have a little bit more fun with this. Let's use InfraWorks uh, 360 and we're going to load up the, uh, the surface and uh, see, see what we get inside of that uh, software. All right, so back in InfraWorks, what I'll do is I'll, I'll create a new model, very rigged in. surface, give it a quick coordinate system, and we'll click OK to uh, create that project. Alright, so I got my new InfraWorks 360 project going on. What I'll do first of all is I'll uh, load in the uh, TIFF grid surface as a raster. Once you load in the surface, you go, you always have to configure the uh, layer and uh, sort of give it a name here. We'll say uh, surface grid. Everything should be good. We'll say close and reflect, refresh. Now that I get my surface, you can sort of see I get this high-end, you know, LiDAR type surface going into InfraWorks. Really cool. Uh, next, just to add a, add a little bit more punch to this, we normally uh, will we'll load in the aerial imagery and, and drape it on top just for the, the sake of this example. What I'll do here is I'll use the, um, the big maps, which are sort of uh, directly available from the software here. So I'll, I'll load this up as image, 
and we'll just go into configure it, give it a good name. Close and refresh. Now that the imagery has been draped, uh, let's go a little further and have a bit more fun. So I've, I've went ahead and downloaded some uh, free uh, GIS data from the uh, city of uh, Fredericton. Um, so number one, I've got the uh, building, a building's uh, shape file, uh, which are, are, are basically 2D polygons uh, representing the shape of a building. So let's load them up. And I'll, I'll configure the data over here as uh, type buildings. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the, with the GIS, we don't have the heights of the building, so I'll just um, I'll just average all the, the buildings with a height of five meters here. And uh, what's important here is to drape the data, so the, the polygons themselves don't have any elevations. We so we're going to uh, push this up and, and, and snap to the surface. So let's close and refresh. And as you can see, within a few seconds, we get uh, some some buildings in our map. All right, let's do the same for uh, for the roads. So I went ahead of time and uh, downloaded the the roads uh, centerline shape file from the city of Fredericton. Um, that comes as a shape file as well. So let's load this up. Let's configure this as data type roads and um, our, just to cut to the chase here we're just going to make all the roads to look like uh, sidewalks or so two lanes and, and sidewalks and same idea here you want to drape this up uh, to the surface because the uh, center lines don't contain any elevation so we'll just use the LiDAR elevations to drape them up. All right, and as you can see, the roads take a little longer to load up, but uh, so we're starting to get a pretty awesome presentation here with uh, data that was freely acquired from the internet. And we sort of have this InfraWorks model going on here um, that, that uh, you can use to um, as a context for your, your new uh, design project. Well, that's it for me. I'm Charles from Atlantic Cat Solutions, and, and thanks for watching. See you next month.